morning, YouTubers. <laughs> On today's episode, I figured why not teach you guys how to weld car exhaust. Since these little flux core wire welders work really well on thin wall pipe, and that's what I figured a lot of you guys might actually use one of these for, um, I went out and bought a couple sections of pipe. So I bought a what's considered a tailpipe, inch and seven eighths by 18 inch. Just got this from the local AutoZone. And then this one, which I cut up, is a two inch by 18. The reason I did this, because I'm all about efficient, aka cheap means of practice. This pipe here slips right over here. So what it allows you to do is put a bunch of these on there and then practice your lap welds. So pretty convenient. It's also economical. Both these pipes combined, I think, were 10 bucks or something. Um, and I just sawed these with a sawzall, just like uh, the catalytic converter off your car. So there you have it. Let's get into it. A couple of things I want to talk about here. So first thing is safety. This exhaust pipe, just by looking at it, looks like it's probably zinc coated or has some kind of anti-rust protection on it. I, I know factory car exhausts are often aluminized, it's called. We don't really know what this coating is. One of the smart things to do would be to wear a respirator while welding it. You don't want to be breathing in a bunch of zinc fumes because you can get zinc fume fever and you'll be throwing up. And trust me, milk isn't going to save you once you get it. So be smart about this. I'm welding it in my shop. I got a air handling unit here that's going to clean up the air anyways, but be smart. The second thing is there's two common joint configurations on car exhaust. You have what's called a butt weld where the pipes come together just like this. And then you have what would be a lap weld. The lap weld is most commonly like if you want to weld a muffler into a uh, exhaust system or if you want to splice two pipes together. Now butt welds are significantly harder to weld. The reason is, is that if you're over the amperage or you, your travel speed is too slow, you'll pop a hole in it immediately. So it's much harder to weld butt welds, which if you're an inexperienced welder and you want to weld, say, two pipes together, rather than trying to do a butt weld and keep blowing holes, you may want to slip something like this over the two pieces and then weld it here and here and maybe tack it in the middle, but that's really not necessary. But that'll make it a lot easier to weld that exhaust in than just doing a butt weld. So for material prep, I saws all these. They're not going to be exactly straight. I deburred the inside of it and the outside. I did not buff off this coating with a grinder. I would recommend, if you're going to do this, clean the edge of it off like a quarter inch, maybe a little bit less, as well as what you're welding it to. Like if you're doing a slip fit, it will weld cleaner. Trust me on that. The other thing is, is that if you're welding on like used car exhaust, that's all rusty, definitely wire wheel at a minimum that rust off of the pipe. It will weld better. Like just leaving all that rust without cleaning it at all is not going to do you any good. Trust me on that. But yeah, we got our pieces set up. So we're going to do lap welds to start. So what I'm going to do is slip these on here. Probably get one more on there maybe. Yeah. So I got uh, all the pipes set up for testing. Let's get going on that. All right, I got the welder fired up. For 18 gauge, the machine's chart says three and a half for wire speed 
In voltage, it says B and a half to C. So I have that at uh, B and a half, and I have it at three, so we'll see how that works. Now, before we go and weld these lap joints, I'm just going to use this end piece. I'm going to run a couple welds on it, and we're going to look at it. As you can see, blew a hole pretty quick. That might have just been me. Let me reposition, try it again. And I am running vertical up. Seems just a little bit hot. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Probably should have cleaned that sticker off. I had a little bit of a push angle at the top, but that seems to be a little bit more controllable. We're not depositing a very big weld here, so that looks a little bit better. Let's brush it off and see what we got. All right, so this was going pretty good, decent width, blew a hole at the end, carried too much heat, same thing here. Lowered the settings, doesn't really look that good. We're gonna need to do a little bit more practice to get this set exactly right and work on my form a little bit. Let me clean this sticker off. Out of curiosity, I cleaned off some of this coating on here and we're gonna do a weld on a clean metal and just look at it, but same settings as before. Even though I dropped it a little bit, still having issues. Let's uh, drop it some more. There we go, we got that dialed in. Yeah, you can definitely tell, see that yellow and white powder there? That's all zinc. Let me wire wheel this. So I'll bring it up so you can see this. Having to move pretty fast, depositing a pretty small weld. You can see again right here, part of it was my travel speed wasn't fast enough, but once I made it more than a half of an inch, I blew a hole, same thing down here. So on just straight steel, no lap weld or anything, no butt weld, my setting I'm currently at is a and a half and two. And that's pretty decent. Let's start uh, attempting to do a lap weld. Now I'm gonna weld this to where I'm always welding uphill and then I'm gonna rotate the pipe just to make it easy for me for practice. However, obviously when you're welding on a car, you can't rotate the pipe. So in that case, you gotta get used to welding uphill as well as kind of at an angle on top of the pipe where you maybe don't have good visibility as well as you have to do overhead because you have to weld the bottom of it. Once I do a couple of these, I'm actually going to set this up and weld it in position where we will together we'll weld it all the way around without rotating the pipe but for right now for practice we're going to do it in position where it's at. So our first weld is done all the way around. I'll wire wheel it and let's take a look what it, how it looks under there. Overall, you can tell by the bead appearance, except for maybe right here, a little pin dot of porosity there. The bead seems a little bit on the colder side. I mean, obviously this is pretty well sealed, but I think we need to bump it up a little bit, which doesn't surprise me 
running a single pass on a, just a single piece of pipe is gonna run a lot hotter than when you're actually joining two pieces. So I'm gonna bump up the settings to B in about two and three quarters. And we're gonna run this side just like I did and we're gonna look at them and compare them. Take a look. So overall, weld is much flatter, a little bit wider. Seems to be wet out pretty good. Oh, look at that, one more pin dot of porosity. Got to get one of those, of course. But yeah, for not cleaning this material and just welding straight on it, that's actually really not that bad. And flex core wire is kind of designed to run on stuff like this, so. It that's looking pretty good. I think my settings are good. I'm just going to slow down slightly and we're going to see how it welds. So there's our most recent weld. I slowed down a little bit. I don't know that it really looks any better. Almost looks a little bit colder despite going slower. Not too bad. Well, I'll finish this out on this one and then we're gonna actually weld this in position. So I'll do the welding without rotating the pipe. So let's take a look at that. Overall, not bad. So for a couple of these, I was doing a little motion, like kind of like a circle E, just to see how that would react. This one, I just went forward, paused for a second, forward, paused. I honestly like the look of that better overall. I got no porosity that I can see. Yeah, not bad. Um, if you ever run into where you're welding like a gap on exhaust, you're gonna have to circle around to get the heat to go to both pieces. Because if you just try and go right in the middle of the gap on thin wall like this, you're just gonna blow straight through it. So by quickly bringing the arc or the wire over to the sides will help prevent the middle from blowing out. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think I like the settings that we're at. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is rig up something to hold this suspended and then I'm gonna weld the next one in position. All right, so I got the setup here. It's quite a bit above the table, but it's gonna be pretty tough to weld this. So I'm probably gonna come in opposite side here since the camera is above here and it's gonna get in the way and I'll weld it up this direction. This is definitely gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but I'll make it happen. Now you probably saw me welding at kind of some pretty crazy angles where I actually had a push angle going. With exhaust pipe, in a lot of cases, there's just no way to get the gun up to where you can do a drag angle. So there is some leeway, especially, I mean, let's be honest, it's exhaust. I'm not building a space shuttle here. So a little bit of push angle in order to get access. Hey, if you can get a weld on it, that's better than not having one there. The other thing is, I tend to weld uphill. You can weld downhill, 
your penetration will be more limited, which actually on exhaust pipe might be a benefit because if you're blowing holes welding downhill, you will have less penetration. But let me wire the wheel this off and let's take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at what we got. Oh, miswelded the bottom there. Yeah, I couldn't really see what I was doing down there, but let's take a look. Overall, most of it looks pretty good. It's just that bottom I screwed up. I kind of just took a guess and thought I was getting it, but clearly I didn't. So we can do better than that, or excuse me, I can do better than that. Let's weld this where it's a little bit more visible and I'll do a lot better of a job. Well, let's see if I did any better. Yeah, not my best work. I don't know if you heard, I actually poked a hole through it on the first side that I was welding. I waited just a little bit and then welded through it. Again, we're welding on exhaust here that's zinc treated. You can't expect the best welds on it. Not too bad. I'm gonna slip that other one on here, I think maybe, and uh, do one more just like I did. And we'll look at those. And then we'll go from there. All righty, so the first one I did right here, overall not too bad, the one with better visibility and access much better. And you compare it to like sitting and just repositioning the pipe. I mean, it's so much easier to get a really decent bead appearance when you don't have to crawl around something. Now, I obviously was able to weld with some visibility on the top of the pipe. When you're welding this in a car, you might not be able to see the top of the pipe. And that's the hardest thing to do is to weld over this and actually have a weld there that fuses and you don't have a hole or a pinhole or anything. That's why if you do a lot of exhaust, I'd highly recommend getting a flexible neck MIG gun because you can curl that around like this and get in there. This little gun here is so small, works great to get in for exhaust, but it doesn't have a flex neck. If it had a flex neck, I'm telling you, that's, that's the best thing for car exhaust. But yeah, I mean, overall, not oh. bad. Let's uh, practice some butt joints here. It's time to do some butt joints. Now we just finished up on those lap welds. Let's reverse this. We'll start out with these two. When you do lap welds, it takes more heat to weld them than it does a butt joint. A butt joint to weld these two is gonna be closer to what it takes to weld just a bead on here and not blow a hole. This on exhaust is gonna be by far your hardest challenge, which is why like mufflers and a lot of exhaust pieces are all, all designed to be a slip fit so you lap weld it because it's so much easier. I can tell you that the, a proper setup is an absolute with butt welds on thin wall like this. If you have a huge gap that's like this, you're never gonna be able to weld it. It's just gonna be impossible because it's just gonna blow holes straight through. So a tight fit up is a must. 
In the case of this, what I'm going to do is tack weld it in a couple places to hold it together and then run a bead over it. Oh, it'd help if I had the ground clamp hooked up. Let's hook that up here. There we go. One of the things, and I'm kind of a bad example here, after every tack weld, technically you should break the wire or cut it off because as you saw, the starts on that were pretty rough. It didn't want to start right away. That would have been a lot better had I actually cleaned it or broke the wire off. Or, so I started with a new piece. Let me grab a brush here and just clean these tacks. So our fit up, if you look, virtually no gap. Now for this first one, I'm going to weld and just rotate the pipe. The second one, I'm going to actually weld to that in position to demonstrate like what you would face on a car. I have a feeling that uh, I may blow a hole in it in position, but let's do this one first. So our settings just are a little bit on the high side for this, and I'm just going to keep chasing holes around. We'll clean this a little bit. And we're just going to take a look at it here. So it started pretty good, and again, there's still a lot of flux here, but I'm going to just end up chasing holes in that. We need to turn the welder down a little bit. So I'm going to go to like two and a half, and just under B, and we're going to start again. I'm going to start just ahead of the weld. Well, let's see what kind of terrible we're dealing with. So the beginning, let's see, I'll be able to tell. So this was kind of like the beginning somewhere in here. It was going pretty good, but as soon as I was going uphill, started blowing holes, that definitely ugly. So then I left a gap and then I restarted. So overall, that's a little bit better. Burned a little hole there, huh? Didn't even see that the flux was covering it. Not too good. I did turn the machine down. So one of the things we're going to try now as I weld this in position, I'm going to weld downhill on it rather than uphill. Let me clean the sticker off of here. All right, I've got that prepped. That sticker was a nightmare to take off. I want to show you the inside of this pipe. There's some reinforcement in there. Not the best. Again, pretty ugly looking weld. I ran into some problems here where I kept blowing holes through. You can actually see the gap in the pipe there. It was uh, being a real bastard. So I ended up doing a series of like spot welds on it, which sometimes you have to do that. And it's the only way that you can keep it from blowing a hole. In hindsight, had I increased the wire feed just a little bit and kept the voltage really low, all that extra wire that would have been stabbing the puddle may have actually quenched it a little bit. So it's one of those things where playing with the settings can really help. And doing more practice definitely would have helped, but that was the last butt weld piece that I had, so I didn't have any more chances to make more attempts. But I think you get the idea. Well, that went pretty terrible, as I expected. So the fit-up of it, because it was just saws all cut, wasn't tight and everywhere that there was a little bit of an opening instant hole i turned the welder down literally as low as it would go and as soon as i struck an arc the weld pool would widen out blow a hole so what i wound up doing was simply running some tacks now to make sure that this is actually gonna last what i would do is wire wheel this whole thing if it was on a car 
and then weld back over it. Since the two pieces are joined and that weld is fairly thick, with it cleaned off the best I can and then running another pass at a little bit higher of a setting, we'll kind of flow it out and if there's any pin dots holes, it would smooth that out and fill it so it doesn't leak. But let me clean this and we'll go from there. Now let's take a look at this. A little bit of porosity there. Definitely not pretty. Where I just did tacks, it seemed to flow out a little bit, look a little bit better. So like I said, in the situation we got here, if this was on an exhaust and you're worried about it being sealed up, wire wheel it the best you can, turn up your settings a little bit and run another pass over it. I'll do that now. So without a doubt, there's no question that that's sealed all the way around. I did circle ease kind of, and I went to just the edge of the toe of the first weld and then out to the other side. Now one thing worth mentioning, and <laughs> this is exhaust again, so not really a huge issue. The wire that I'm using is capable of doing what's called the second pass, or it's a multi-pass wire. Not all flux core wires are designed to do multiple pass, but let's be honest, it's exhaust. It's not the end of the world if you don't use the proper wire, I guess. It's oh, missed that. That's all right. Overall, it didn't do too bad other than that. Not really sure what happened there. It looks like slag entrapment. If you saw that on the exhaust, you could go back and do a little tack weld over and it'll be all right. Again, this isn't going in outer space. And if that leaked while it was on the car, you would see a puff of smoke out of it, which anytime I've welded exhaust, I hook a fog machine up to the other end and just check it on a tailpipe to fill a pipe with smoke just to see what's going on if there's any leaks. Because like I was saying, it's pretty common to have a pipe like this up in such an inaccessible place that getting like an A1 quality weld simply isn't possible. Not to mention if you wanted that, well for one you'd be TIG welding it on this thin of stuff instead of flux core, but I don't know, you get the idea. Not bad. I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully this stuff helped you. If you want to see me do another video or something covering a topic you would like, let me know. But uh, thanks for watching. Go build something.